Today I want to share with you how to make fermented hot sauce and I'm going to share two spicy recipes and I'm going to share with you my special ingredient that I like to add that I feel really gives these a fabulous flavor. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I share traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, what I've got here are two types of peppers. These are Fresnos and these are jalapenos. So I'm gonna make a Fresno hot sauce and I'm gonna make a jalapeno hot sauce. Now, in addition to the peppers, the other ingredients that you're going to need are sea salt and whey. Now, if you don't have whey, don't worry. Then you're just going to need extra sea salt. And you may be wondering why I'm using whey today, because as I've shared with you in the past, if you've been with me for a while and you've seen some of my videos where I made fermented vegetables, I often don't use whey because I find it imparts a little bit of a milky flavor. And that's true. However, when I make fermented condiments like mustard and ketchup, and even when I make homemade mayonnaise, I like to use whey because I find whey in those cases helps to soften the sharpness of the flavors of those type of condiments. And if you're interested in seeing how I make all of those, I'll be sure to link to that in the i cards and in the description below uh, so that you can, if you want to make uh, fermented ketchup and fermented mustard and so on and so forth, you can learn about that. Uh, but so that's why I like using whey when I make hot sauce because it helps uh, to just make the flavor nice and make it palatable. And so that's what I do. But if you don't want to use whey or you don't have whey, that's no problem at all. Now, if you don't know how to make whey, I have a video where I show how to make whey. And I'll link to that in the i cards and in the description below uh, so that you can make it. It's very easy. It just involves uh, draining some yogurt or some kefir, a dairy kefir, milk kefir, and then the white uh, sort of cloudy liquid uh, that is the what's drained out of that uh, can, is whey, and then you can use it for your ferments and a whole bunch of other things, which I discuss in the video about whey. But in any event, uh, the next thing that you're going to need, so that's going to be, that's, I've got a half a cup of whey there, and we're going to put a quarter a cup of whey in each jar. Then what I've got here is a coarse ground Celtic sea salt, and you're going to need a tablespoon if you're using a coarse ground sea salt. If you're using a fine ground sea salt, you'll need a half a tablespoon. However, if you decide that you don't want to use whey or you don't have whey, then you're going to want two tablespoons of the coarse ground sea salt and one tablespoon or one tablespoon of the fine ground sea salt if you're using the fine ground. So we're going to be putting a quarter cup of whey into each jar and one tablespoon into each jar of the coarse ground sea salt. Now in addition to the peppers and the whey and the salt, I like to add a wonderful mix of spices. And that's kind of my special ingredient. And I find that these add such wonderful flavor to the final product, to the final fermented hot sauce. And what I like to do is add a quarter cup of my homemade pickling spice. Now you can use, they're all basically very similar, whether you make it homemade or you buy it store-bought. So you can definitely uh, use a store-bought uh, pickling spice if you don't uh, make your own blend of a homemade pickling spice. But I will tell you what's in here in case you want to make a homemade version. But as I said, you can definitely use a store-bought pickling spice. Or you can com leave, completely leave it out and just use the peppers and the salt and the whey. But I have to tell you, this pickling spice really gives the final fermented hot sauce product, the end product, a wonderful flavor. Now I wrote down all the ingredients that I use to make the homemade sp pickling spice. And I just want to tell you what they are in case you decide you want to make this homemade. And what I start with is a, a one cup, one full cup of yellow mustard seeds. And then to that, 
I add a half a cup of allspice berries, a half a cup of dill seed, a half a cup of celery seed, a quarter cup of cloves, and a quarter cup of caraway seeds. And then I also take a cinnamon stick and I break that up and add that in. And then I also add in about a half a teaspoon or so of dried ginger. Now you could also, in this ferment, you could throw in some fresh grated ginger if you want, and that's definitely uh, perfect for this too. But when I make up this uh, mix, I usually just put in about a half a teaspoon or so of the ground ginger. And then I also crumble up a couple of bay leaves. It's not an exact science, you know, depending on how, if the bay leaves are small, I might put two or three. If they're really big, I might just put one or two. But that's the, the basic mixture. So the yellow mustard seeds, uh, the allspice berries, the dill seed, the celery seed, the bay leaves, the cloves, the caraway, and then the cinnamon stick and the ginger. But again, you can certainly use a store-bought pickling spice as well. It'd be very similar. Now the first thing that we're, we're going to want to do is take our jars, and these are half gallon jars. Uh, if you make a smaller amount, you could certainly cut all these ingredients in half and just use quart sized jars. But I've got a lot of peppers here, so I'm going to do this in half gallon sized jars. And I'm going to go ahead and put my little special ingredient in, in here, my pickling spice, and we'll get that into the jars, and then I'm going to put the uh, one tablespoon of the coarse ground sea salt into each jar. I don't like to put too much salt when I make a hot sauce um, because even though these are half gallon jars, because we're going to have so much water, it's not like we're uh, doing a ferment where it's packed with vegetables and we're going to need a little more salt to help keep those vegetables crisp. Uh, that's one of the purposes that the salt serves, is to keep vegetables crisp when you're fermenting them, as well as to create an environment that's more friendly for the good bacteria and tamp down the bad bacteria. But in the case of doing this with peppers, we're not going to pack them in. We're going to put them in. There's going to be a lot of water. And so uh, one tablespoon of the coarse sea salt in a large jar like this is sufficient. And the next ingredient that you're going to need is some sort of chlorine-free water. You can use spring water, or if you have a filtration system at home that filters out the chlorine, that's great too. And the reason you want to use chlorine-free water is because if your water has chlorine in it, it interferes with the fermentation process. Now don't worry if you don't have filtered water or bottled spring water. You can certainly use your tap water. The only thing is you'll want to pour it out the night before or into a pitcher and just cover it with a cloth, you know, to keep it clean, keep the dust out, um, but a very thin cloth and allow and overnight let it sit and allow some of the chlorine to dissipate. And then you can use that water for the fermentation process. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a little bit of water, not a lot. I just want to get some of the salt dissolving and some of the spices softening a bit, just a little bit like that. And then we'll go ahead and also add in our quarter cup away. This is a half a cup. I'm just going to measure this loosely and just try to get a quarter cup in each jar. Okay, that's perfect. There we go. I'm just going to give this a little stir around and I'm going to do the same thing to this one and then I'm going to put these aside. Now normally when I work with food, I really like to be able to feel the texture of the food. I don't like to wear gloves, but in the case of hot peppers, I find you really need to work with gloves. So I'm just going to put these gloves on and then I'll show you how we're going to cut up these peppers. Now just a little tip, when it comes to ferments, you want to make sure that everything that you're using is very clean, that your cutting board is clean, that your knife is clean, that your jars that you started with were clean. And since I'm using these gloves, I wash my hands with the gloves on to make sure that the gloves are very clean as well because we don't want to introduce any bad bacteria into the ferment. We want to give the ferment as good a head start as it can and hopefully if there's any uh, bad bacteria it's tamped down quickly allowing the good bacteria to flourish. Well the first thing we'll do is start with these lovely Fresno peppers and I'm just going to cut these tops off and then I'm going to cut the pepper in half. Now, if you want, 
you can add in the membrane and the seeds, but that's where the membrane is where a lot of the spice is. And for us, I find it just makes too spicy a final product. So I'm gonna use a little spoon, I'm gonna use a grapefruit spoon, those work great. And I'm gonna scrape out the membrane and the seeds. So that's all I'm gonna do, just take this grapefruit spoon and just scrape out the seeds and the membrane and put those to the side. And I just wanna mention about saving these, the, the tops, you can just throw them in a bag in the freezer and they break apart pretty easily. And what's nice is if you do make mineral broth and you find that, oh, you know, a lot of people bone broth or mineral broth, sometimes people will say, oh, they're a little bland. You throw in a few of these, they're not gonna be bland. <laughs> But I'll, uh, if you're interested in making a mineral broth, I'll put a link in the iCards above uh, so you can see how I do that. It's a nice uh, alternative to uh, bone broth or a, a nice alternative for people who are vegetarians. And you don't need to chop these up or anything like that. You just cut them in half, clean them out, and drop them right in. And if you want to keep in all the main membranes and uh, all the membrane and the seeds, then you would just chop the top off and you could throw them in whole or cut them in half either way uh, but that this is it it's as simple as that so i'll go ahead and clean up all these spicy peppers and then i'll show you what the next step is well i've got the fresnos all done so i'm going to set those aside and then i'll show you what the next steps are in a minute but first i'm going to get all of these jalapenos chopped up and into their jar and before I do that, I just want to mention a word of caution that I didn't mention when I put the gloves on. It, whether you're doing it without any gloves, which I hope you're not, or with gloves, always remember, don't touch your face for various reasons. Number one, you've got the spicy peppers on them and could really burn your face and your eyes. And secondly, you also don't want to put any bacteria onto your, onto your uh, gloves. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just do exactly the same thing with the jalapenos. I'm gonna cut them in half and I'm gonna scrape out the seeds in the membrane and put them into their jar. And I just wanted to mention that I have a pound of each of these peppers, a pound of the jalapenos and a pound of the fresnos. But I'll also have the whole printable recipe over on my website, marysnest.com. So you can head over there if you want and print out the recipe. And I'll be sure to have in there that there's a pound of each of these. Well, I've got my Fresnos in the jar, I've got my jalapenos in their jar, and now the next thing we're gonna do is just top these off with some water. But we're gonna wanna leave some good headspace because these are going to get very bubbly. So I'm gonna leave about two inches of headspace just so we don't get any bubbling over. Now I'll just do the same thing here to the jalapenos and leave about two inches of headspace. Now at this point you have a couple of options. You're gonna to have to put a lid on these and you can simply just use the plain white plastic canning lids and just put those on securely. However, you're gonna to wanna to watch these because every day as the fermentation process starts to take place and the bacteria starts to release CO2, carbon dioxide, this is gonna become very bubbly and so you're going to need to burp the jars. So probably after the second day, especially if you're doing this in warm weather or in a warm kitchen, and you just release it, you might hear a little whoosh, and then close it up again. However, if you don't wanna go through that process, they make all kinds of fermentation devices today that you can put on top of these lids so that you don't have to burp it. I have these pickle pipes that just has a very tiny little hole in here that lets the CO2 out, but no oxygen in. And so all you do is just put that on top of your jar. You're gonna need a canning lid. It's a wide mouth. This is a wide mouth jar, so you're gonna need a wide mouth canning lid. Uh, canning ring, excuse me, not lid and then you're just gonna tighten that, and then you don't have to worry about going through the burping process. Now the next step, all we have to do is just find a warm, undisturbed place in the kitchen out of direct sunlight, and just let these sit and ferment for a few days. You're gonna to start to see the bubbles, and it's going to become very effervescent, and it's really up to you how long you wanna let it ferment. Uh, I usually like to go no more than five days. Some people will leave it for a couple of weeks, but I find five days is just the right amount that uh, it's gotten nice and effervescent, very rich in probiotics, and ready to be turned into a hot sauce. 
Well, I had both of these sitting on my counter for about five days and they're all nice and bubbly now. So we're ready to move on to the next step. Now I use these little pickle pipes so I didn't have to uh, burp the jar over the, over the uh, last five days. Uh, so that was kind of nice. And uh, if you're interested in using these pickle pipes, they're made by, the, these particular ones are made by Mason Tops. And the people over there are so nice and they gave me a coupon code uh, for 15% off their items that they sell through their Amazon shop. So be sure to check that in the description below. So we'll start with the Fresnos first and I'll show you what we're going to do. We're just gonna remove this ring, remove the pickle pipe, <laughs> and then we're gonna strain out all of the liquid. This smells so good, <laughs> it's so heavenly. Uh, from all the spices that we added. Now, what you want to do is get a blender, and this is just a plain regular blender. If you have a high-speed blender, that's fine, but you really don't need one. And then all we're going to do is just empty this jar into the blender, along with everything else, the few peppers and the various spices and whatnot that we caught in the strainer here. And that's it. Now I'm gonna add the brine back into this jar just to make sure I can get all of those herbs and spices in there mixed in. I just put a lid on to mix it up just to make sure I got everything down off the sides. Got one little piece, one little spice piece hanging on there, but that's great. Now I'm gonna pour that back into the measuring cup. Now you don't really need to go through that, that step, but I like to do it because I don't like to waste anything and I didn't want to leave any of the spices behind in there. Now what we're going to do is puree all of the peppers and the spices and we're just going to start with a quarter cup of the brine. Oops. And then we'll add more brine as needed to get this nice and smooth. Now I pureed this for about a minute and I think it does need a little more liquid in it to help smooth it out a bit. So I'm just going to start with a tablespoon of the brine at a time. So I added in a tablespoon of the brine and I'm going to swirl it around again. And I think another tablespoon of brine and it should be perfect. Here we go. Now I really like this consistency and I'm gonna overlay a picture. I'm gonna put some on a plate here and I'm gonna overlay a picture uh, so that you can see exactly what this looks like. How much uh, brine you add back into the peppers when you put them in the blender is gonna depend on so many things. How much uh, liquid that the peppers themselves contained in the first place, how much liquid they absorbed during the fermentation process and what consistency at which do you like your hot sauce? Do you like it very watery? Do you like it a little, a little thicker consistency? For us, I really like this consistency. This is perfect. So I would say the consistency is uh, a little thinner than ketchup, but thicker than water. Now we're gonna strain this one more time just to make sure that we get out any little bits and pieces of the spices that may have not been pulverized. Now I just want to mention about this brine. Don't throw this out. This is precious if you're a fermenter. And the reason that this is so good is because after going through the fermentation process, this is very rich in probiotics. You can store this in your refrigerator and it'll last a good while, a couple of months at least. And this can be used uh, for your next ferment. So if you use whey when you ferment, you can replace, instead of using the whey, you can use this brine uh, instead of a quarter cup of whey in a jar this size. Uh, you can use a quarter cup of this brine because this is very probiotic rich and that'll help get your ferment going. And a spicy brine like this would be perfect, you know, for doing spicy pickles or a, a spicy sauerkraut, whatever the case may be where you want to have a brine that's spicy. So I've got about a quart here, and I am just going to go ahead and store it right in here, in this quart-sized mason jar. I'm going to scoop out a lot of these spices that we used to get them into the jar best that I can. 
and then I'll just put this little bit in a smaller jar. I don't want to keep my, uh, I don't want to occupy my big uh, half gallon size jar uh, with, with just this much. That's why I'm putting this in a quart size jar. And then I'm going to get a little place to store that. And then I've got this wonderful probiotic rich brine. I'm just going to get this hot sauce off the plate. And then we're going to pour this through this strainer into this measuring cup. I cleaned out both and I'm going to get a spatula to get everything else out of here and then we'll work it through. Now I'm just going to work the hot sauce through the strainer and strain out any little bits that weren't pulverized. Well I got everything strained through and as you see I have a little debris left here that just didn't pulverize, you know, because we had all those spices in there. But everything else is strained through, and I'll show you how we'll decant it. And now I'm going to get ready to decant the Fresno hot sauce into this bottle. And I've got two bottles here, because I think that I'm going to have enough to fill more than one bottle. Already I got one bottle filled. This smells so good, and we're going to take a taste, too, and see how it is. But I'm confident it's going to be delicious. And if you, you can use any bottle that you have, any type of bottles you like, even if you like to put it, your hot sauce in squeeze bottles, whatever the case may be. Um, but I'll put a link in the description to below uh, if, if you want to get these exact type. Uh, they're just available on Amazon. You may even find them at your local kitchen stores or the big box stores. I've seen them in a lot of places. And now I'll just put the remaining in the second bottle. And now another bottle. Alrighty, I'm going to take a little taste. Mmm, it's spicy, but what wonderful flavor. Oh, I love the Fresno peppers and all of the spices, the pickling spices we put in gives it such a great tang and the fermentation is a little vinegary. This is really good. Mmm, this is really delicious. I highly recommend this. Now I'm going to repeat the whole process with the jalapenos and I'll show you how everything looks when we're done. So I did the same exact thing. I pulverized the jalapenos uh, with some of the brine until it came to a consistency that I liked and then I strained it through the strainer and as you see there's just some little bits and bobs here that I'll discard and we'll get ready to decant this. But first we'll give this a taste. And now remember uh, at this point, you know, before you decant it, if you want to add a little extra salt or whatever the case may be, this is a good time to check the seasoning as well. And also the consistency. You can add less brine, more brine, whatever thickness you like your uh, hot sauce to be. Alrighty, let's give this a little, I'm going to just take a little bit. Jalapenos can be very spicy. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Oh, it's got a kick, but it is really flavorful. And now this has more of a kick than the Fresno, but it's got a wonderful, if you like jalapenos, this has a wonderful jalapeno flavor. And I had to make jalapenos, because <laughs> jalapeno hot sauce, because I live in Texas, and we have a lot of jalapenos here. But that, it's got a nice spice to it, not overpowering, and the jalapeno flavor comes through, and then all the spices that we added, uh, and the slightly vinegary tone to it uh, from the fermentation process. This is really good. I highly recommend this. Now I just want to say one thing about storing these hot sauces. You want to put these in your fridge. It'll considerably slow down the fermentation process and they should easily last for six months. But because these are in bale bottles, you would want to periodically burp them. <laughs> But you can certainly put them in screw top bottles as well and then you don't need to worry about any burping. So I hope you'll give these fermented hot sauces a try. They're really delicious and if you'd like to learn more about traditional cooking be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I have a short playlist where I show you how to make fermented condiments including mustard, ketchup, probiotic rich mayonnaise and a salsa. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.